On this episode of Tibet Da Vinci, we're going to talk about solar panels. So I've had mine for about five years now, and I thought this would be a great time to talk about them and all the lessons that I've learned and all the data that I've gathered and to share with you my setup. So I have five solar panels that I had installed in 2011, and back in 2011, they were a lot more expensive than they are now. So I'm really glad I went with a smaller system. So we're going to talk about just how much energy I've generated, how much it's cost me, and how much longer I have to wait before I can recoup my initial cost and be in the black. So I have five 235 watt panels I paid $10,000 for before federal and state tax credits. I had the installation done professionally by a company and you can see here that the whole system is very modular. It comes onto a single rail, which allows it to be very plug and play and to be expanded upon. So I went with five panels because I figured in the future if I wanted to add more, I could do it when I had the time and the money. So here is how the wires run down to my electrical panel and you can see all the placards are displayed, the permitting is all done, and I am fully licensed and, and allowed to do this with my utility company, who now allows me to net meter and to be able to feed the grid back at times when I'm not using it. So the main takeaway to remember is that even if the solar panel company recommends you install a bigger system of 15 or 20 or 30 panels, that you can always install less. Remember that these systems are very modular and you can always add to them. You can wait and hedge your bet against the dropping cost of solar into the future. And whether you're trying to save money or the environment, solar is a really good investment and I'm gonna get into why. All right, this is a view of my Enphase monitoring software. And this comes for free with any Enphase inverters. And this is a lifetime program. It is hosted on their servers and the data is on the web. So you can access it from anywhere. Now, as I mentioned, I have five solar panels. And what's really cool about this software is you can tell here that each day, the output is a little bit different. This was a perfectly sunny day for a winter day. You'll notice that the panels light up as the sun hits them and they warm up. And as the sun starts going down, the output also drops off until the nighttime. Now, this was a really bad day because on this day, we had really low output and it must have been a really, really cloudy day. So solar is a little bit unpredictable for that reason. Off to the right, I have some analytics about the lifetime and the month to date and for the week and for the day. Now, what's really cool is I've made 10.5 megawatts of power. And now we're talking like power plant levels of power over the past five and a half years. Every time I see that number go up, it's kind of a um, aha moment that tells me that this is a pretty cool investment that I've made. So a thousand kilowatts is a megawatt, just to give you an idea of how much power I've made over the lifetime of these panels. Now there's other really cool views as well. One of them is the lifetime view. So if you go to lifetime, it'll actually show you all the power for each day for the entire lifetime. And we'll switch over to the graph view. So here you see, I got them installed, looks like July, 2011. And in the summertime, the power's output is much higher and you'll see that drop off. And this is the seasonal drop off. This will be the fall and then the winter and then spring and then back to summer. And this is what happens. And you'll see these little spikes like this one down here where even on a summer day, I had really little output. And that means that there was a really cloudy day for that, for that day. So your area, your region is gonna kind of vary, but these guys will tell you what you can expect based on where you live. So it looks like in the winter time, I'll average around around four kilowatts or so in the summertime between seven and eight. So if you take an average of the two and we call it about five and a half kilowatts a day, that'll give you a rough idea of what these five panels can create. All right, now let's take a look at our electric bills from the electric company. So I have a side-by-side -side comparison of January from this year and last year. But one thing I noticed is that they changed the way they bill me. So you see all these different elements that go into your bill. You've got your generation costs and transmission and distribution and they charge you for all of it. But to make it simpler, if you add it all up, they'll charge you in different tiers. So tier one usage, that 374 kilowatts or less, is billed at 19 cents. And any power you use above that is charged at 39 cents, which is more than double. And you'll notice that is different from how it used to be because last year they actually had three tiers. In tier one, they charge you 17 cents, which is less than it used to be. They had the second tier, which was 19 cents, very similar. But the two combined were 421 kilowatts, which meant that only the 422nd kilowatt would be charged at that high tier three rate. But now, the 375th kilowatt will be charged at that rate. So they're gonna get their money. And if you think your electric bill is high now, the bill is only gonna get higher and higher. So because your electric utility company is a monopoly, meaning you can't change it and pick another company if you wanted to, the government regulates how much they can increase your rate. And that increase is usually around 8%. And what I did is I did the math and I compared my bills over the years. And I found that they tend to go up about 8% every year, just the maximum that they can. It doesn't mean that they're greedy. 
It just means that they have to take care of inflation and their rising costs and their shareholders and take care of their bill. So this bill is really interesting because it shows you January and December. It shows you a little bit of 2016 and 17. So if you notice in the bill, what you'll see is that they used to charge me 28 cents per kilowatt for that high tier. And now it's become 31 cents. And so if you do the math, they've raised their rate about 8%. What that means is that next year, it'll be 8% higher than it is now, and so on and so on. And so these prices are only gonna get higher and higher, and solar panels are only gonna get cheaper and cheaper. So there comes a point when this will really make sense, and if you wanna get ahead of it and jump on it now, uh, of course you can do that. But the longer you wait, the more compelling this argument will be, because the cost of solar panels will continue to come down, and your electric bill will continue to go up. So the return on investment will become shorter and shorter Shorter. And so what I did is I looked at a bill here for January and I noticed that my solar panels created about 100 kilowatts. So what that means is that if I didn't have solar panels, that that would have put me into tier two and it would have cost me 39 cents per kilowatt times 100. So about $40 extra. So for January of that month, my solar panel saved me $40. Now in more extreme months like August, for example, in the summertime when I'm running air conditioning potentially, the solar panels are making 200 kilowatts. And again, doing the same math, now we're saving about $78. Your rate of savings will vary as a function of time based on how much power your solar panels are creating and how much you're using. But what I found is a good average was about $65 over the whole entire year. So if you do the math times 12, that is $780. So I had mentioned that my solar panels cost $10,000 back in 2011. Now I got a $3,600 tax credit from the government, from the federal and state, which meant that the true cost was about $6,400. Now, if I divide that by $780, that get a return on investment of eight years. So I'm six years in. So that means that in two more years, I'll have paid for the solar panels. After that, the next 20 or 30 years is pure profit. So now I have 235 kilowatt panels and I have five of them, which is about 1100 kilowatt hour total. But today you can get 305 watt panels and you can get 10 of them for the same price, which is about three times as much production as I have. So if you divide 8.2 years by three, well now you're looking at 2.7 years to return on your investment. So if I had waited five more years, I could have gotten almost triple the system for the same price. I really hope this was informative for you and enlightening. I hope my data shows you the seasonal trends and what you can expect, and also how good or bad, depending on how you look at it, the investment of solar panels is. Remember that solar panels aren't an investment in terms of resale, because again, the technology is increasing so quickly that your solar panels will continue to be worth less and less. If you're looking to sell your house, don't get solar panels because you're not going to recoup that cost. But if you're going to live in your house long term, then it can really start to save you money. So they're an investment in terms of production and usage, not in terms of resale. For five years, I've never had to do anything. It's cost me zero dollars to maintain. The only pain in the butt is that you have to get up on the roof and clean them every so often. You'll increase your output by about 4% if you keep those panels clean and dust free. Now I'd recommend cleaning them every couple of months or at least two or three times a year, um, depending on how hard that is for you to get up on your roof. But that's about it guys. If you wanna see more information like this or if you're more curious about solar panels, like us, subscribe, give us a thumbs up. Solar panels are something I get asked about by all of my family, my coworkers, my friends, my colleagues. And so this is information that I wanted to put together to share with our entire 2-Bit community. And if you guys have any questions, don't be shy, reach out to us. Thank you guys so much for watching and we'll catch you guys next time.